Hey, this is Steve Halleck, and I'm going to do another TikToking review video today. Um, as always, uh, please hit subscribe to the channel if you want to see um, all the watches that I post here. Check out all my past reviews. I've got some good ones up there. And uh, check out the blog, TikToking.com. I don't update it that often, um, but when I do, people generally find it to be interesting. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, without further ado, today I've got another Patek Philippe. This is a 5960P. Um, and this is a really cool watch that I think is is really underrated in the market. So I'm just going to go go over it quickly. Um, you may have seen my other review uh, of a 3970, which is a chronograph with a perpetual calendar, um, which is really the the kind of um, most famous combination of complications for Patek Philippe. Um, this watch is a chronograph. It's a f actually a flyback chronograph with an annual calendar. And this watch was a big deal when it came out. Um, it was the first uh, ever in-house automatic chronograph from Patek Philippe. Um, and uh, anytime a, a company makes a whole new in-house chronograph movement, it's pretty big. It's a pretty big deal. Um, it is definitely a lot of R&D that goes into a, uh, a completely ground up new chronograph movement. And uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't happen often. So especially for, you know, for uh, Patek Philippe, that's, uh, that's a whole thing. So this was the original, um, let me try to get that light out of this. Uh, this was the original combination that it was available in. It, it came out um, only in platinum to start and with this gray dial. And since then, there have been a lot of other variants, uh, a blue dial, a black dial, rose gold with a silver dial and a black dial. Um, and then recently, this was actually discontinued. And I believe the only variant that they still make it in in current production is steel with sort of a racing dial and a steel bracelet. Um, so we'll see what the market does with these. Right now, I think they're super undervalued um, and and really kind of the best daily wearer Patek Philippe uh, that I know of at least. So let's go into why. Um, first of all, proportionately, it's a really nice size. It's The case is 40 and a half millimeters. And um, that's just a perfect size to have it be um, be big enough that it it it's kind of sporty and modern, um, but it's not huge by any means and can definitely be worn as a dress watch. Uh, and it's very comfortable on the wrist. It's a fairly thick case, but again, not overly chunky or thick. Um, and it wears very comfortably. And I'll, I'll put it on my wrist at the end of the review. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and the dial itself is obviously very sort of modern for a Patek Philippe and it's super functional. Uh, and it's definitely, this is one of those watches that really looks a lot better in person than it does on a computer screen. You know, with watches in general, you tend to see these things on a computer screen, which makes them sort of um, 10 times the size they would be in real life. And so you can focus on little things that um, you would not never notice in, in real life. And sometimes you get lost in the details. Whereas when you see the thing in the metal, you see it as a whole and uh, it comes across way better. And I feel like this is one of those watches that really needs to be seen in the metal um, because the, the sort of issues that a lot of people have with the design of this watch, they just don't matter in real life. They all kind of fade away. And ultimately it's just a really nice watch. Um, so in terms of functions, it's got kind of all of the most useful functions that a watch could have, which is why I say that it's a really, um, sort of the perfect daily wearer. Um, first of all, it's automatic, which is really nice, uh, when you have any sort of calendar function, the, the 3970 and 5970 and 5270, all these perpetual calendar chronographs. Um, it's, it's definitely a bit of a pain in the butt to have a manual wind perpetual calendar um, because if you don't wind it every day, then the calendar dies and then what's the use of having a perpetual calendar? Um, so having an automatic really helps a lot. You can put it in a winder if you want to really keep it wound all the time um, and it's just always, always sort of good to go. 
So first of all, what does an annual calendar mean? Um, so here you, you see the day of the week, the date and the month. And an annual calendar basically keeps track of any of the 30 or 31 day months. So uh, it knows um, to switch properly you know, at the end of July or at the end of June, it went straight to July 1st uh, and you never have to reset it then. The only time you do have to reset it is in February every year um, because it doesn't know the 28 or 29 day month. Um, so that's not that big of a deal. If you're like me, um, you sort of know that February screwed up, but I always forget which months have 30 days and which months have 31. So uh, an annual calendar is actually a really nice function. And I really like having um, the day of the week and the date just super easily legible because those are things that I actually do forget and it's helpful to have on a wristwatch. Um, under there, you see a power reserve. Um, so minus is empty and plus is all the way full. Um, some people think this is useless on an automatic watch. Um, I actually think it's, it's almost more useful on an automatic watch because you have less direct control over how much wind is in it. So it's nice to sort of pick it up and see uh, where you are and if it's wound or not wound. So for right now, I just pulled this out of the safe and I, I wore it yesterday. Um, so we're at about half wound and I would just put it on my wrist and go about my day and in a few hours I know it would be fully wound and uh, so that's kind of cool to have. Um, you've also got luminous um, material on the hands and then not on the markers themselves but on these dots around um, on each hour. So that's obviously really nice to have. I saw a movie yesterday and I could actually read the time in the movie theater. Um, and then down here uh, is where things get really interesting. So you have a, a chronograph, it's a flyback chronograph, which means that um, you can reset it with it still going. So if you're timing, say like laps or something, this is, you know, 10 seconds and then boom, second lap, you return it and it, it keeps going. Now, while a flyback chronograph itself, I don't usually find that useful. What I do really like about it is that it prevents um, the movement from breaking. Uh, so on a normal chronograph, if it's running and you hit the reset, uh, you have a risk of damaging the movement because that's not the right sequence, right? You're supposed to stop it and then reset it. Um, but since a flyback chronograph is made to do that anyway, um, it, it you can't hurt it basically. You can push any button at any time and it's not gonna hurt the watch. So that's really nice to have. But then also what it has, which is really sweet, is it has an hour counter for the chronograph. So most chronographs count to maybe like 30 minutes or 60 minutes or something like that, but you can't really time further than that. This actually counts 12 hours on the chronograph. So around the outside here, you have the minutes. Um, you can see the five and the 35, and that red hand will count the minutes. Underneath the red hand, let's see if we can see it. Uh, there you can kind of see it. There's a blue hand and it's shorter and it counts the hours on that inner track. So you can time really long things. You know, you could time a four and a half hour event or uh, if you were, uh, I don't know, a lawyer and wanted to time a deposition or something like that and it was five, five hours and 15 minutes long or something, you can time the whole thing on your chronograph. Um, and you know, that's a nice thing to have because lots of times if I'm timing something, it'll be longer than a half hour. Um, so the other function here is that little hole there that's white. That's a day night indicator, which really helps if the watch dies and you need to set it um, because you know uh, if you're sort of right now, I know that it's uh, 1054 almost before noon. So I know that I could go through noon into the afternoon and not mess up the date. Whereas if it were, uh, it turns like a dark blue. And if it were that dark blue color, I would, uh, I would screw up the date by going forward there. Um, also cool things about the movement is it's protected. So you can um, advance the time forward or backward without hurting the movement. And even if you advance it backward through the date change, it won't hurt the movement. So those are some things that make some watches really easy to break and they made this watch really foolproof, which I think is one of the best things of, um, you know, people talk about in-house versus not in-house. 
and uh, sometimes things are in-house for no reason. But if you're going to go through all the trouble of designing an in-house movement, I think one of the best things you can do is make it uh, sort of idiot-proof and, and very robust, which is what they've done with this movement. Uh, a couple other cool things. So Platinum, Patek Philippe, they inset a diamond, a single diamond there on the inner lugs for only the owner to see. I think they've been doing that since 99 uh, is the research that I saw. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing. You know, it's a platinum case and it's not, you know, it doesn't distract from it at all, but it's sort of a neat little finishing touch. Um, here you have the pushers to correct the date. Uh, I always forget which one is which and have to look in the owner's manual. Um, but one of them does the, um, the date, the day, and the month. Um, so let's take a look at the movement. Uh, of course, Patek Philippe, beautiful movement, uh, very well decorated. Um, you've got this big rotor. Here you can see, uh, let's see if I can get it for you. Come on, rotor. Okay, right there you can see the uh, Patek Philippe uh, seal, which is their sort of quality seal, um, supposedly tighter um, criteria than the Geneva seal. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit gimmicky, but we all know that they make really nice movements. So uh, this uh, definitely uh, lives up to the Patek Philippe hype. Um, other than that, uh, it comes on this deployant buckle. This is my least favorite part of the watch. Um, the pin that they use on this deployant is just a little bit too small. And so it can come out of the hole. And if it comes out at the wrong time, your whole watch can just fall on the floor, which is not fun. Um, the good news is that when it closes, they've made it so that that pin hits the inside of this buckle, and so it kind of holds the watch on whether it's through the hole or not. You know, it can't, there's no wiggle room for it to slip out. Um, and that's, that's a part of the design of the movement, you can, uh, of, the, uh, of the buckle. You can see that's where the, the pin hits. Um, but it, it still makes me a little bit nervous and it's definitely not my favorite part of the watch. Um, so let's put it on and I'll show you the size. All right, so there you can see it's really nicely sized. Um, that 40 and a half millimeters is going to look good on almost any wrist and it's got, it's got some substantialness to it and a modern look. Um, but yeah, you could definitely wear it as a dress watch and, and also it's sort of perfect with, with jeans. Um, uh, you can see online, people have even put this watch on like a NATO strap and turned it into a, a real sport watch, uh, which is cool. Um, or you could imagine if this were um, like a black croc instead of a brown, uh, it would really dress this up and make it seem like a lot more of a dress watch. So you can play around with it a lot and different straps are gonna make a lot of a difference, uh, especially with this gray dial. So anyway, that is the Patek Philippe 5960P. Uh, it's a killer watch. I think it's a really great value in the market right now, uh, especially for, you know, for a platinum Patek Philippe chronograph annual calendar, um, the, the the price is just really cheap. I, I think ultimately it's gonna have to go up. Um, and when these first came out, they were selling like over um, over list price. You couldn't get them. And now sort of, um, I don't know, people don't pay any attention to them. So if you're in the market, I don't think you can go wrong with this thing. Uh, and uh, that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.